think dinosaurs, we tend to think of the animals of the Cretaceous and Jurassic. Movie star dinos, like T-Rex, Velociraptor, Stegosaurus. But these creatures wouldn't have had a single cameo were it not for their forebears in the Triassic. When the first dinosaurs, plesiosaurs and pterosaurs, really cool ones, like this eudimorphodon, first appeared on planet Earth. The remarkable reptiles that took over the world during the Triassic hung on by the skin of their terrifying teeth near its end to give us the glorious giants to come. It begins 250 million years ago in the aftermath of the Permian extinction, when violent volcanism nearly wiped out all life from the face of our planet. The Permian Jurassic extinction was the mother of all extinctions. Life was back down to some of the simplest forms and it took millions of years for it to recover. Until very recently, we thought the devastation was so complete that little stirred on the charred earth for the first 10 million years of the Triassic. But in 1998, scientists found this amazing creature, T. serophagus, in the fossil layers just above the Permian extinction. The size of a school bus this dolphin-shaped reptile took to the seas in as little as eight million years after the Permian disaster. As soon as the oceans began to take up oxygen again. It's a sign of things to come. Triassic's time of tremendous innovation because the decks have been cleared so severely in the Permian Triassic. So you, you basically wipe the slate not clean, but pretty clean. <laughs> all the niches are open, all the ways of living, of making a living are, are there, and so it's like free lunch. If we spin the Earth back 247 million years to five million years after the Permian disaster, the subsiding smoke reveals a single supercontinent called Pangaea surrounded by a single mega-ocean called Panthalassa. T. serophagus hunt squid and bony fish here. As modern reef-forming corals and communities finally start flourishing and repopulating the seas. Ammonites, nearly wiped out, begin to proliferate and diversify. urchins and sea stars appear for the first time. We had Pangaea and everything was great on Pangaea for a long time. We had coral reefs that seemed to be doing okay and um, just sort of a nice hot humid high oxygen environment. On land Lumbering, heavy-armored herbivores thrive in lush conifer forests. My favorite terrestrial organisms in the Triassic are the animals called aedosaurs. They look like a big crocodile-sized lizard, but they have armored plates that look like football pads that are down the length of them. But their mouths are tiny and their teeth are tiny, so you have this animal that's armored itself up so it can walk around and nibble on vegetation. So they're all dressed up in the place to go. That armor comes in handy in the Triassic. When fending off speedy, agile predators like Coelophysis, one of the earliest known dinosaurs, seems to hunt in wolf-like packs 
picking off young. See, the Feisters is cool. It first discovered in Ghost Ranch in New Mexico, and they didn't find just one. They found a bone bed of dozens of them. The first pterosaurs, like Eudimorphodon, first take to the air in the Triassic. Though how they manage it, no one knows. Whether by air, land, or sea, by the end of the Triassic, around 200 million years ago, life has radiated and repopulated the entire Earth. You had all these places to colonize, and then there was room to kind of make your place and put your roots down, literally or figuratively, and um, evolve and diversify. And they did. By the end of the Triassic, you've evolved the first dinosaurs, you've evolved the first mammals, and you start to see the hint of the modern world. But all good things must come to an end. And what happened then was the breakup of Pangaea. Toward the end of the Triassic, the same forces that crashed all the continents together are now conspiring to tear them apart. A rip in the fabric of our Earth pulls North America from Africa and Europe. So we find uh, lava flows in New Jersey. We also find lava flows on the other side in Morocco. So Morocco and New Jersey were right next to each other, and that was one of the centers of the, these eruptions. Coming between them, a new body of water, the Atlantic Ocean. What I love is the fact that one day there was no Atlantic Ocean, and then some few years later, it was a narrow canal, and then you could jump across it, and then you couldn't jump across it. In a matter of just 40,000 years, the blink of an eye in geologic time, all hell breaks loose. Earth entered yet another period of extreme volcanism, spewing out its guts in waves of lava and gases. The larger creatures of the Triassic can run, swim, and fly faster than the violently widening new sea. But they can't hide. The sudden release of carbon dioxide, sulfur, and methane creates runaway global warming, acid rain, and acidic oceans. Critical plants and animals at the bottom of the food chain die off, and the system collapses. 75% of all species fade into the fossil record, the world's fourth mass extinction. So they were hit in the Permian, they're beginning to recover, they're recovering in the Triassic, and bam, they're hit again. But like all the previous mass extinctions, not everything is hit. The dinosaurs survive, the mammals survive, the turtles survive the parasaurs survive. So on land, you have these lineages now that are often racing. Just under the scorched earth, some tiny, shrew-like creatures with their live-born young hunker down. These first mammals, like Megazostrodon, measured in ounces and inches, seem unlikely to inherit the earth. First, they'll have to survive yet another age under the feet of giant reptiles. Because the ones who managed to survive through the Triassic extinction are about to give rise to the most terrifying ancient creatures of all. 